guys, welcome. Um, happy Monday, thanks for joining us. My name is Jesse Jennings and I'm a content creator here at Plaid. Um, and we have Kirsten Jones in the studio here to teach you this really cute mini uh, floral duo. It's a really fun, loose painting um, that Kirsten's gonna show us tonight. So just as a reminder, if you guys decide to paint this painting, go ahead and hashtag Plaid Crafts and hashtag Make It With Michael so we can see all of your beautiful artwork. Um, and also if you have not already joined our Let's Paint With Plaid Facebook group, it's a really fun community you can join on Facebook. Like I said, it's called Let's Paint With Plaid and there's all different artists on that group. I'm on that group, Kirsten's on that group, Andy Jones, Chris Williams, Donna Dewberry. There's just tons of artists there. Um, whether it's your first time painting or you've been painting for a very long time, it's a lot of fun. Everyone posts their paintings and comments on it um, and just really encourages each other. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you do that. Um, we have a couple of classes. Kirsten's gonna uh, show you guys our next week's paint night class at the end of this class. So make sure to stick around so you can see that. Um, and we also have a class on Friday with Chris Williams. I'm sure you guys know her from paint nights or from Lunch and Learn and all of those programs. She'll be teaching in the Michael Sweeney classroom at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And she's gonna be doing a really fun summer fashion hat. So she's gonna show us a really cute little painting that she's gonna do with multi-surface paint. So make sure to check that out again, Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And I will go ahead and pass it over to Kirsten. Hey everyone, I'm so excited to host with Jess. Um, so tonight, like Jess said, we're painting these two little canvases that kind of coordinate and match. Um, and we're gonna paint these in about an hour. So first thing I wanna do is show you guys the supplies that we're gonna use for tonight. So we are changing it up a little bit and we're painting on these smaller little canvases really just to have fun and do a set as opposed to one big canvas like we always do. These little canvases are five by seven, but just like any of our classes, if you wanna do just one of these canvases and do that technique on a big canvas, if your two separate canvases are a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, absolutely follow, around, follow along with us because tonight in all of our classes is a lot about technique. So your canvas size can be different. So we are using folk art acrylic and these are the colors that we are gonna use tonight. So we are using Ocean View, which is this beautiful soft teal. We are using yellow ochre. We are using silver marlin, which is this new blue silver gray that I absolutely love. Wicker white, which I always have, we're always using that. And then two different greens, we're using pistachio, which is this light lime green, clover green. Then we are using navy blue. And then two different pinks, we're using baby pink, which is a really soft pastel. And then we're using fire coral, which is just more of a, a true coral, kind of a darker pink. And with every single class, I try to tell people, so we're using two greens on our supply list. If you have one, you can mix some white. We're using two pinks, we're using a pink and a coral. If you maybe only have one or you have a hot pink instead of a coral, any color that we use, just follow along and learn the techniques and you will have the perfect time. So for brushes tonight, I'm using this CraftSmart brush set, which is absolutely perfect for all of the paintings that I do. I am a big fan of a flat brush. And in tonight's class, it's a little bit smaller of a canvas. So we'll focus on the half inch flat brush, the three quarter flat brush, this big one inch flat brush, I'm gonna tuck to the side, we probably won't need it. And then definitely, I think this is a number eight flat. And then we'll probably use this number two flat, but these two liner brushes, we probably won't use that much either. So again, just like the paint palette that you guys are gonna use, I just wanna make sure that you have a larger, a medium, and a, and a small flat brush. That's what's most important tonight if they're not the exact same brushes. A, pal a paper plate or palette paper always a stack of paper towels, some water to clean your brushes, and then transferring the pattern. That is something that we are gonna transfer by drawing basic shapes. So I am gonna use just a standard piece of white chalk, but you could use a pencil, you could use a pen if you're just really light-handed, but you wanna have something to transfer your pattern. Okay, guys, so those are our supplies. So any questions, and then we'll get started. No part so good. We have a couple people here since saying they don't have small canvases. So can you do this if you just have like a like a large or medium canvas? Yeah. So not having two smaller canvases, 
If you're feeling wild and crazy, you can do two bigger canvases. Um, just know that we're gonna try to do this in an hour. So it might take a little bit longer just because your base coat areas will be larger. But what I think is a great technique is the flowers, you can see on the two different canvases, the techniques are exactly the same. This tulip is the same as these two. The leaves are the same. They maybe just go in a different direction. You could apply your pattern. Maybe it's a combo of both of these. Maybe it is just one or the other. And then just follow along with the techniques and you will have a beautiful canvas at the end. All right, anything else before we get started? Anything about the supplies? Uh, we have a couple of color mixing questions, but I think we can just kind of answer those as you use the colors. Okay, right? perfect. Well, definitely stop me and let me know. Okay. okay. So one thing that I love to do for anybody that's ever painted with a class that I have taught is I love to paint on a dark base coat color. So what we are going to do, we are going to base coat one of our canvases with the navy blue and one of our little canvases with the dark yellow ochre. So that's our first step. And all I'm gonna do is put both of those colors on my palette. And then using maybe my medium to large flat brush, I'll probably use the three quarter inch. I am just gonna get a solid base coat on my little canvas. You can see the folk art covers beautifully. So we'll, we'll only need one coat. That is such a beautiful golden yellow color. That's really pretty. And you can see the base coat, if this was maybe a vase or a piece of furniture, you would apply two coats. But if you guys have a few little brush strokes in there, don't worry about that at all. That is a perfect base coat for what we're doing this evening. And Kirsten, remind us what this color is called. So this is, I hope you're not tricking me. I always say it wrong. <laughs> I'm not trying to trick you. I just, I think it's yellow ochre. I just don't want to say it wrong. Somebody was asking. Yeah, it's yellow ochre, but I always stumble with it a little bit. <laughs> yep. yep, yellow ochre. Thanks, Leslie. And I always tell everybody, due to the sides of these canvases, Michael's has such great stretched canvases. The quality is so great. And if you do to the sides what you do to the top, there's really no need to put it in a frame. They're beautiful just as they are. And they'd be so cute displayed on maybe one of those little table e easels. Um, they're I just so idea. Yeah, it'd be so cute, like maybe on a mantle or on your desk. Like part of a gallery wall with like a bunch of like photos or something. That'd be so cute. So cute. So just a pretty even solid base coat, not too thick, because another thing that's really important for this base coat is we want to work on a dry base coat. So after you get your base coat, um, if you're a lot faster than me, make sure you hit it with a blow dryer so that we're working on a dry, on a dry base coat. So then my second canvas, I'm just gonna base coat with this beautiful navy. And again, the folk art is such good coverage, but don't worry about it being perfect. You don't want it to be too thick that it doesn't dry. You just want it to be a darker base coated canvas, not that standard white. And same thing I'm doing to the edges, what I'm doing to the top. I love this navy and yellow together. Me too. Need a little bit more on my palette. Kirsten, we have tons of people painting along with you tonight. Oh, I'm so glad. I never get to be on this side of it. I love getting to see everybody painting. <laughs> kind of fun, huh? Yeah. Next week, I'll do yours. I'll be the other <laughs> <Okay>. side. <laughs> only done it once, and it is super fun. Yeah. Okay, guys. So you should have a navy blue canvas. Again, you don't want your paint too thick, so it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want a pretty even coat. Scoot those over, and then you want the yellow canvas. And while everybody is base coating, all I'm gonna do is hit both of them with a hair dryer so that they're totally dry when we're crafting.
tape everything down. I've got things blowing off my table. <laughs> I'm gonna grab it. I always have to hold my palette paper and my paper towels. I know, okay. I always forget. I think the acrylic dries so quickly. I think the yellow one is totally dry. I'm just gonna hit the blue one one more time. Maybe up here. So blew it right off again. That's okay. Take your time. I think everybody needs just a minute to catch up. So you're good. Okay, I think we're good, except I blew my papers off again. <laughs> Well, while you're getting your papers, I do want to, want to do a quick reminder. Um, so we try to do this class in just an hour. So all of our paintings are designed to be painted in one hour. So if you find that these classes go a little bit quick for your pace, um, don't forget that all of our classes are being recorded and they'll be put on michaels.com within the next 24 to 48 hours. So we really encourage you guys to paint along. But like I said, if it's, you feel it's a little bit quick for you, don't worry, we'd love to have you um, and chat with us and ask questions and then you can go back and paint along with the video later. So just keep that in mind while you guys are, are enjoying this class. It's perfect. Okay, so there's your base coat. You've got a dark one, a dark blue and a, and a yellow, um, beautiful colors. And the main reason that I like to paint on a color rather than white is it's a great technique where you're not adding shadows and highlights by adding dark colors onto your painting, you're actually leaving those dark colors exposed, which gives you all of this beautiful dimension. Like you can see that yellow highlight. Let me hold that up there. See how that beautiful yellow highlight is around my leaves, a little bit around the navy. That's your base coat peeking through. It's in the flower petals. And the same with this one on the navy. Rather than going in and having, having to add all those dark shadows, that navy blue is just making that light blue. It's making that pink, that green, that much, much richer by being the base color as opposed to adding it on the top. So it's really just a really fun technique. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we did not supply a pattern for this because something that we want, so this you can see is very loose. Um, very simple shapes, very abstract. So we didn't want you guys to color almost like a coloring book. So by not providing a pattern, you're just creating basic shapes to then go in and add color to. So what we'll do, let's start with the blue one, which I'll get that yellow one out of there. And I want you to view, this as a tulip. So like a half circle, almost like the bottom of an egg with a jagged top the bottom of a little egg with a jagged top. And then for your leaves, all we're gonna do is stems. So just to represent placement and then little leaves that are not perfect, but just to place each flower onto your canvas. So the first thing I wanna do is this little tulip right here. So on the bottom left corner, I'm just gonna do a little egg, like the bottom half of an egg and then just a jagged little top. And then for this top little flower, you can see he's kind of leaning to the left. I'm gonna do another little, like the bottom of an egg and a little oval, and then a little jagged top. And by applying the pattern, no, it's more of a guide for placement. It's not something that you're gonna color in perfectly. So then the stem for this top one, just gonna curve that down to the bottom of the canvas. The stem for this little guy is gonna go a little bit to the left and down. And then what I wanna do is I wanna have these random little vines. So there's a little blue one. Here's this little green one that disappears behind the flower. So let's start there. So this little guy starts about there, just a really soft line, kind of envision where he would go behind the flower. If it makes more sense to rub that off, cause you know, he's just on the, he's behind the flower. So then this little blue guy is just a tiny little half circle on that bottom left corner. 
And then this is the only other pattern. And this little leaf just kind of comes from right here and crisscrosses that little stem. So very simple lines and shapes. If you don't want as many, leave one off. If you like more, you can add another one in the back. But just two ovals with, a, with kind of a zigzag top and two little stems. And then we are gonna just draw, again, very loose, only for placement, a few little leaves on each stem. So remember, this stem disappears behind that tulip. So I'm just gonna do one or two down here. This little stem is the base of that tulip, this one right here. So he doesn't have any leaves. This little guy, Again, a few little leaves, knowing that we're not gonna color them in exactly, but we're just putting it there for placement. And then this little guy on the bottom left corner, just a few little leaves, very random. You don't want them lined up exactly. Now, let me see if I can be, st oh, be steady enough. Perfect, you can see that, great. And Kirsten, if you don't have chalk, could you use a pencil or another sort of like writing utensil? You know what? A pencil works great. The only reason we don't use it here is it's really hard for you guys to see on the dark colors. So at home, a pencil is perfect and you will be able to see it perfectly. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So that's canvas number one. That's the dark blue background. Then I'm going to bring in the other one. And again, same exact shapes, just a different layout for the painting. So here's that little egg bottom with the zigzag top, and it's almost centered a little bit higher than lower, and it's facing that way. So I'm just gonna do like a little bottom of an egg, and then just a zigzag top like a tulip. And then there's his little stem that comes down to the left. And then you can see this leaf that's the tallest one behind the tulip and then comes down right there. So I'm going to start it, bring it down, kind of envision where it goes behind the tulip, and then it comes down. This little guy that flops all the way over starts about there, a little half circle. And then this little tiny one just hugs the left side of the canvas. So just almost a straight line. And then this dark blue one kind of curves maybe towards the top of the tulip and then comes down straight on that side of the canvas. So maybe right about there and just comes down. The reason we try not, well, the reason I decided I'm at, um, not to provide a pattern is I just, someone taught me years ago to be really confident when applying a pattern and to make it your own. And so if you apply your own pattern and if they're loose shapes rather than exact shapes, you'll focus on the techniques of painting rather than just coloring in exactly. And I always thought that was such good advice. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I love that. Thanks, Kirsten. So now I'm just doing, again, very random, very loose, little leaves down this little stem. Remember, he falls behind the tulip. So I'm just gonna do maybe one or two on the bottom. Little small leaves on this navy blue one. Just a few, maybe one at the bottom. And the same thing with the stem that goes over to the side. And maybe one at the top. And then this last stem same little leaves, maybe a little bit smaller, just to have some variety on these tiny little canvases. And then one or two on the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna hold him up as well. Oh, I never get it right. <laughs> ah, I don't know why that's a challenge, there we go. But you can see the pattern is really just for placement because the technique is what is going to be so fun. And you can see there's an area that's not a perfect base coat. You can see a little bit of the canvas. If you've got some spots like that, absolutely perfect. That will not affect your painting at all. Okay, so you should have all of your patterns applied in a soft chalk 
pencil. All righty, here we go. Let the fun begin. Okay, so the technique that I love is dry brush painting. And that means nothing more than we are not going to have almost any water mixed with our paint or on our brushes for tonight's technique. So the first thing I'm doing is applying fire coral to my palette and baby pink. And then I always, always have wicker white somewhere on my palette. So I am going to start with, let's see, the number, I think this is the number eight flat brush. But this would be, if you don't have the exact set that I'm using, this would be like your medium sized flat brush, about the size of your nail. I curious no a couple of questions. Okay. Um, so the first one is, you said you always have wicker white on your palette. Why is that? So wicker white, I add to every single color. And the reason I add wicker white is one, so your palette isn't 20 colors. It's these nice six colors with white. So because wicker white matches or mixes with the coral, it gives you four shades of coral. Because it mixes with this blue sky background, it gives you three shades of that blue. Same with the green, same with the yellow. It just allows a green, two greens to be five greens, or it allows one coral to be five different shades of coral. So it just allows you to blend, get all of that dimension and layering with just one coral or one baby pink. And the white just changes up that color. Awesome. And then a second question, um, if you don't have fire coral at home, what could you mix to get something similar? Oh gosh, so any coral would be, you could have an orange and a pink and you can make a really pretty coral. Um, you could add a little bit of yellow to a hot pink, which would be a really pretty coral. Um, coral is really just a combo of pink and orange. Ju uh, Jess is the color expert, wouldn't you think? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. If you have, you know, orange and pink, absolutely mix them together and you've got coral for sure. Or even if yeah. you have pink, just put like a touch of yellow in it and you'll definitely get coral. Yeah. And even if you had a hot pink, this yellow ochre color would be would make it. And if it's a little too dark for you, you could add just the tiniest bit of white and you would get a beautiful color similar to fire coral. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions before we start with our little tulips? I think everybody's ready to paint. Okay, guys. So what I'm going to do, just so you guys know, I am going to do everything the same color on both canvases. So when I'm doing the pink tulips, I'm going to do all three tulips. So we're gonna be going back and forth on our two canvases. I think it's just the clearest way to get both of them done with the same beautiful look. So rather than painting one and then the other, we're gonna do the coral on both, that green, the green palette on both. So that's, um, I think the clearest way for you guys to follow along, but like always, let us know if you have any questions. So a brush with no water, I'm just going into that fire coral and you wanna make sure that you have some paper towels because you never want too much paint on your brush. And the first thing I'm gonna do is on this bottom edge of the navy blue flower, I am just gonna do a very loose base coat. And I don't want too much paint because this is the key to dry brush. You want that navy blue to come through. You don't want to outline. You almost want to do like a random pattern, just applying color to the area that that tulip is. Same with this little bottom tulip along the bottom, not outlining like this. You don't want to create a straight line. You just want to apply that coral color to the bottom section of that tulip. And by going back and forth, almost slapping your brush onto the canvas, you get more and less areas of the same color, but it looks different because of the navy blue coming through. And then the same thing with the little tulip on the yellow, I'm gonna do the top side of this tulip. And I'm just gonna go back and forth applying, really we're just applying a base coat to our tulip area.
and then not cleaning my brush. If I have a lot of paint on there, you can remove it on a paper towel, but no, not going into the water at all. I'm gonna go into that baby pink and I'm gonna just slap color, bouncing back and forth. You don't wanna work in a row like little tiles. You don't wanna go top to bottom like stripes. You just wanna overlap the coral and just apply again, almost like a base coat in the baby pink but you wanna overlap that coral, blending that edge. Same with the little tulip on the yellow canvas, but you don't want so much paint. There's a perfect way to show you. So see if I can be steady, see how a little bit of that yellow, that beautiful yellow comes through. With a really impressionistic painting like this, you want that yellow to pop through in different areas of your design. Pick up paint as you need it, but less is always better than more. You want the brush to almost lose all of its paint so you get both that canvas texture and a little bit of that yellow coming through. I'm gonna remove some of that paint on my paper towel, but still not going into water. And I'm gonna go into that fire coral and just do one more layer, but again, just overlapping that pink, allowing those colors to just mix really softly and really random. You can see some of the navy is still coming through, but you're not completely base coating and eliminating that dark color. That's great already. Get, oh, sorry, Jess, go ahead. I was just saying that looks great already. If you get a really solid line between the pink and the coral, you can pick up the other color on your brush and just keep blending until you've got that perfect combo of the two colors. You don't want any harsh lines. You just want those to, bend, to blend, but you want to see both your brush strokes, a little bit of your base coat, and also the texture of the canvas. And here's one of those spots. So I'm not cleaning my brush in water, but I'm removing most of the paint and I'm gonna pick up the littlest bit of the wicker white. And I'm gonna do that same technique, just back and forth on that. Could you hold the canvas up and just show the brush strokes slowly, just kind of the motion you're doing so people can see? Absolutely. So rather than painting like this, like creating a pattern, like maybe tile or stripes, I'm actually almost, someone said it once in a class, it was so cute. Almost like you're dusting the canvas, one side, then the other, one side, then the other. You're just kind of rotating it back and forth using, using both sides of the brush and almost like you're dusting it or sweeping it. Okay. It's probably making people car sick. <laughs> I'm moving both. <laughs> That's awesome, but, perfect. Thank you, Kirsten. Okay, picking up a little bit of the white on this little tulip and where those colors kind of meet, just back and forth, just adding almost like a highlight or a spot where the sun would hit that flower. See how you get all that beautiful shading by not having any water? Mm -hmm. And then this one is where you can see it even better. The navy comes through, allowing you to have all those beautiful shadows. So on this little bottom one, I hadn't added any white yet. So on this top section, just a few little areas, again, where the sun would hit the flower. And if you like the dark coral, a little bit more than the baby pink. I'm gonna go in and add that a little bit more as my last color, because that fire coral is my favorite color. And a little bit more on this one, just on the bottom. And just those three colors, you can see with this technique, you get so many different shades of coral and pink with this technique. 
and I'm not using any water. All I'm doing is making sure I don't have too much paint when I pick up the next color. Now, what we're doing here is I'm just defining the top of my tulips, but again, not perfect, not by outlining, but I just want a few little points or what would represent the top of a tulip. So I'm just gonna kind of create a little point, like a little triangle. This side I'll do with the light pink, but just to define the top of that a little bit more. Add a little white, a little highlight to that area and do the same thing over on this yellow canvas. Just the tiniest little point, just to define the top of that tulip. Okay, so there you've got your beautiful coral pink tulips. Now we're gonna use water to clean our brushes. So definitely clean that little brush. We'll be using that again. But then get it as dry as you can on a dry paper towel. Okay, so now on that same palette, we are gonna add our two greens. The dark one is the clover. The light one is this really beautiful pistachio. But any two greens, a dark and a light, would be perfect for this. And then I still have wicker white on my palette. So make sure if you don't have any, add some to your palette. And I am going to switch. But I always say use whatever brush you're most comfortable with. I am gonna to switch to this number two flat brush, which is just a tiny little flat brush. Okay, so let's start on the blue. And all I'm gonna do at first is using the lighter green. I'm just gonna load that brush. And all I'm gonna do is place my leaves. So I'm not gonna fill it in completely. I'm just gonna do maybe one side, the opposite side on the next one very loose and very little paint. See how the texture, oh, that's perfect. See how the texture of the canvas and the navy blue comes through, which gives it all that beautiful dimension. That looks great. It was so close. I thought I was touching the camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can see it perfectly. It's super clear. Oh, good. Then I'll keep going all the way up there. Yeah, it looks okay. great. But you're just getting the start of a base coat. And we're going to focus on this long one that goes behind the tulip. So then I'm going down to these little leaves. And then just so I don't lose my pattern, on staying on that chisel edge, which is the tip of the brush, I'm just going to create that stem. And when you get a second, can you hold it up one more time? Absolutely. Oh. Why is that? It's backwards. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Okay. And then you'll notice this little guy, this little leaf grouping is the blue. So we won't do him yet. I'm going to go over to this one over here on the other side, that same light green with not a lot of paint. I'm just going to dry brush and highlight a few of those leaves top or bottom just really random. And then do the same thing. I'm just gonna create a really soft stem. And then I'm gonna go in on my little tulip and I'm gonna create his little stem. Same technique, very little paint and allowing that canvas, that navy blue to show through. And then this little guy on the tulip on the bottom left. I'm just gonna fill in for his little stem. We're gonna leave that guy alone because he's blue. Now what we're gonna do here, we didn't draw this. We didn't make a pattern out of this. I was gonna kind of make this little area optional. If you want those little flowers up there, if not, it's really cute without them. But if you like having that little extra up there, either with your chalk or freehand, you would just do three little circles 
kind of coming up the side, kind of that same pattern as the leaves. So what we are gonna do then with that green is we're just gonna connect them. We're gonna go from there to there, from there to there, and from there to there. It's really just giving those little circles a stem. And we'll go back and paint those yellow at the end. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna try to get all four canvases on here. There we go. Okay, what we did to these green ones, we're gonna do down here. So this long guy, same brush, same color. We're just gonna base coat one side, sometimes the top, sometimes the bottom of each little leaf. We're gonna go down here and do these little ones below the tulip. Then we're gonna give it a base by creating the stem. Very little paint. Again, you can see the yellow coming through. Really cute. This stem that leans over to the left, same thing, base coating those little leaves. Not completely, but just giving them their first bit of color. That little leaf kind of falls off the side of the canvas and then giving it a base by painting the stem. And then our little tulip has a stem. So we're just gonna create that. This little guy is blue and this little guy is blue. So for now, we're gonna leave him alone. So the same technique we did with the fire coral and the baby pink, we are gonna go in between the light green and the dark green, not using any water, but taking off too much paint always on our paper towel. So I'm gonna remove some of that paint and go into the dark green, which is clover. And I'm gonna do the opposite side. So maybe on that leaf, I did the top. On this leaf, I'll under, undercoat the bottom. That one just had a really soft highlight of the green. So I'll add, oh, I got a little, there we go. These lights sometimes dry the paint really quick here in the studio. So I had a little bit I had to get off, but I'm just still dry brush base coating all of my leaves by going back and forth in the light green and the dark green. And the only key to this is less is more because you want the canvas color to show and you want that beautiful texture to show and you can't take paint off, but you can add more back on. So I'm just going back and forth and you'll see how different the colors look on the navy as opposed to the yellow. So maybe on the yellow, you'll need more of this dark clover. And on the navy, you'll use a little bit more of the light pistachio. But you're just overlapping with a really dry brush. The two different greens. Even though I already did my stem in that light green, I'm still gonna do my stem again, right over that light green with the dark green. And by doing the two colors, one over the top, you're just creating that dimension and almost like a highlight. I'm gonna do that stem also on this little one. And where my tulip is it's already light green, I'm gonna go over it with the dark green, but what you'll see, oh, perfect. People are just asking for you to hold it up. So perfect timing. <laughs> the two greens together, just kind of sketchbooked over each other gives you all that beautiful dimension. And same with on the navy. Oh, the two greens over each other just gives you all that beautiful dimension, but not too much because you want that navy and that canvas texture to pop through. And so just when you think you have enough, you're gonna go into that white, just like we did with the pinks and the corals. And you're gonna highlight just a few different areas. 
not always the top, not always the bottom. You can do a little bit on the stem, but almost like you're just dusting one section of each leaf to give it a little pop of highlight. Also on your tulip stem. That one's a little too white. So I'm gonna go back into that pistachio green on this dark navy and add a little bit more pistachio. But just dry brushing over. So all of those colors blend so beautifully. Like right there, I think is maybe a little too much white for me. So I'm gonna go into that dark clover and just simply go over it. You don't wanna hide the white completely, but it just gives you a little bit of dimension. Same with up here on these little dot flowers. I'm just gonna thicken and overlap those little stems with the dark green. Same with this one. I'm gonna add just a little bit of white to each leaf. And you can see how the same technique looks so different on the yellow versus the navy. A little bit more of the pistachio. I don't want too much white. But always making sure that you clean off your brush on your paper towel because you don't want too much paint to build up in your brush. Very little paint is kind of the key to this technique. Okay. So now you should have your little tulips all done. Your, most of your green stems are totally done. You've got some shading, some highlighting, some dimension. I'm gonna clean that same little brush in the water and dry it on the paper towel. And I am gonna get on my palette, the silver marlin, which is a really beautiful, almost like a denim with a little bit of gray in it. And then more of the navy that we base coated our first canvas with. I've still got some wicker white on mine, so make sure you still got some wicker white on your palette. Okay, so on this top one, it's just this bottom flower, and we're gonna focus on the blue marlin because our base coat is already navy, and then it's these two little stems on this one. So I'm gonna pick up that blue marlin. Oh, let me get my paper towel back in the... And I'm just gonna, just like we did with the green, I'm just gonna put a little bit of color in all those leaves. And then I'm gonna fill in my little stem. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the navy and put it over the marlin. This is a great area to show you that even though your base coat is navy, when you're mixing the navy on a dry brush with that silver denim blue, it's another shade totally different. So we're only using two blues, but we're getting all of that variety. And then on these little ones down here, very little paint. I'm just placing color on all those little leaves. Same with this one over here on the other side. You can see each leaf is totally different. You're really just with a loose, a really loose, fun, abstract style like this. You don't want each of your leaves to be exactly the same. And if you don't have blue marlin, do you have a suggestion of what you could use instead? Um, the marlin is, you. so you could mix and you would want almost all white with the littlest bit of navy. And then, oh, 
I would say black, but we don't have black. You know what? I think a little bit of that clover would make almost like a, a dirty denim is what you want. So white and a blue, a little bit of black or a little bit of green would dirty it up a little bit. Um, yeah, it's a denim. It's a really soft denim blue with a little bit of silver in it. A little bit of gray in it, I guess. We're not using metallics. So a little bit of gray. Perfect. Kirsten. Okay, so we've got a little bit of that blue marlin on there. Picked up a little bit of the navy. And just the same thing that we did with the two shades of green. You're just brushing right over that to get both of those blues on each leaf. Really coming together. Make sure this is such a great spot. It looks so crazy, but when you would do the background, it all comes together. But see where the canvas texture and the yellow is still coming through. That's really the key to get this kind of look. So I'm gonna go into that blue marlin and I'm just gonna create with my chisel edge only, which is the very tip of a flat brush. I'm just gonna create that soft stem that ties it all together. Same with this little one over here. And same with, oh, we already did the one up there. And then I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth until it's exactly what I want. I like a little bit more of the navy on this yellow background. I just think it's so beautiful. So I'm gonna add a little bit more navy to my leaves over here. And I'm gonna go right over that marlin stem with the navy, not covering it up completely, but just allowing it to have that much dimension. Same with this little guy over here. Cleaning off my brush and then a little bit of that wicker white, just putting, oh, a little too much, putting a little highlight, almost like you're just dusting each leaf. A little bit on the stem. But just getting all of that beautiful shading. I'm gonna to go to this little guy down here. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the navy. But again, we're over that blue marlin, so it'll be a totally different shade of navy than our base coat. And I'm gonna get the littlest bit of wicker white and just do a little highlight. Okay, all of our placement is coming together. I love it. All right, so now any questions? Cause now we're gonna do the background. The background, and this is another different thing. So if you were working on white, your background you would do first. But we, because we have this dark base coat that allows the background to kind of be created already, all we're gonna do is highlight our background and that's the step that we're doing last. So it's kind of a little backwards technique, but it's so fun. There's so many techniques and there's so many different things you can do with it. Okay, so I jumped up to a different, um, a little bit larger flat brush. This is the number, I think it's an eight or a 10. And then this beautiful ocean view, which is just a really soft patina. So I'm gonna put that on my palette. I'm gonna add a little bit more white. And then you know what I'm gonna do? I'm out of yellow ochre. So let's add yellow ochre, just a little drop. Cause for those of us that did these cute little flowers up here on the navy blue canvas, I'm gonna get back out that small brush that we've been using. And all I'm gonna do in the yellow is I'm gonna fill in these little dots that we made. 
they're just really almost like little flower buds, like really loose circles with their irregular edge. So really quick, Kirsten, uh -huh. can you remind us the brush you're using? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. So I went back to this little number two flat that we just did our leaves with. Okay, and then remind us of the color mixture you just did. So all I did was yellow ochre straight out of the bottle. And I'm just kind of brushing those little dots that we did at the top. Let me hold that up. Just three little circles. Perfect, thank you. And then all I'm gonna do is on that same brush, I'm gonna get a little bit of the wicker white and I'm just gonna highlight those little circles. So those are your little flower buds that come out at the top. Okay, now I apologize for that. Now I'm skipping to the medium sized flat brush. And this one is an eight or a 10. It's about the size of your fingernail. And the reason I like to use a bigger brush for the background is I want you to have more of a, a almost like a consistent size brush stroke. And if you're using that really small brush, you won't get that. So this is a great size brush for that. Okay, so all we're gonna do is dip right into that ocean view. Again, not too much. I'm gonna get a new paper towel. Not too much, because it's the same technique that we've been doing all evening. I'm loading both sides of my brush, but not having too much paint in there, removing some of it on the paper towel. Now, the key to the background is you don't want to do a pattern. You don't want to start on the left and work right. You don't want to stop at the top, start at the top and work down. And you definitely don't want to get up on your chisel and outline everything. So what you want to do is load your brush. And just like we did this large tulip, you want to slap the canvas, but be very random. You don't want to do just this side until you run out of paint. You want to jump around the canvas applying paint to several different areas. And the reason you wanna jump around the canvas, as weird as it sounds, as you jump around, you're taking paint off of your brush. So the value of the same color is gonna be different. So it's gonna give you this very um, abstract background. Whereas if you start, if you unloaded your brush only on this corner, that section would be one color and then the next section would be one color. So that's what you don't want to do. Pick up paint as you need it, but remove it on your paper towel and just jump around the canvas, applying that beautiful ocean view. Now, the fun thing about this is all of those dark shadows that you see that are navy blue is the background showing through. So you want to get close to the leaves, close to the stems in these little areas, but you do not want to color, cover that navy blue completely. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, for sure. Picking up paint as you need it. You can see your first layer is a lighter color, but we're still only using that ocean view. going in between the leaves, in between the stems, but never outlining. And never too much paint, because you want all that texture, just like on all of the design elements, the leaves and the flowers, you want that navy to show through and you want the beautiful texture of the canvas to show through. So what I always do is a really light coat at first. You can see this is the same color, same technique, but it's just a really soft, dry brushed application. You can see a lot of navy is popping through down here, down here, and then I'm gonna let that dry. Same color, same brush. I'm gonna do the exact same thing down here on the yellow. And you'll see that same ocean view looks like such a different color on that beautiful yellow background. But I'm jumping around the canvas 
same thing in the reason so that see there's less paint there more paint there same color but you want that dimension by moving all around your canvas. Never picking up any water and only picking up this beautiful ocean view but not outlining because where that yellow comes through is so beautiful. Can you show them closer when you get a second? Sure can. Let me get a thin coat on this one. The yellow is a little bit different than the navy blue. The navy blue you'll see much quicker because it's such a dark color. The yellow, we're gonna build up with a few coats of this ocean view. Let me get a little bit right here, but then I'll hold it up and you'll see, you'll get that same beautiful look. We're just gonna add a few more coats because of the way the ocean view works with that golden yellow. Okay, and I'm gonna hold that up. See where the yellow is coming around the stems, around the leaves. You want all of that to come through. Okay, and then all I'm gonna do, just like we did on our tulips, I'm gonna jump back and forth, maybe adding a little bit more of this ocean blue in a few areas. Again, have fun with it and make it your own. If you love it a little bit brighter, you'll add even more. If you like this really soft ocean view, you won't add any more. And this is a spot where due to the edge, what you do to the top, but if we're running out of time, just know, go back when the class is over and do the exact same techniques that we just did to create the background. Do that to the sides. And you'll see when you do that, it just gives you such a beautiful finished canvas. I'm gonna do just the two sides because I'd rather focus on the top but make sure you remember to go back and do to the sides what you did to the top, the exact same technique. A little bit more ocean view. I'm just gonna kind of brighten up just a few areas over here by these leaves. Maybe a little bit in the centers of those yellow flowers. And then just like we did in every different palette, the green, the coral, I'm gonna clean off that brush on the paper towel and get a little bit of wicker white and just add a little bit of highlight. No rhyme or reason. You wanna jump around the can canvas when you've added the white as well because you don't want it to create any kind of pattern. If you do really a little quick, bit- Really quick guys, I just wanna remind everybody, sorry to interrupt Kirsten, um, don't forget guys, this is being recorded. So if you feel like you need to go, um, I know Kirsten's just wrapping up. We're going to be on time tonight, but don't forget Michaels is recording this class and it will be put on the Michaels YouTube channel. Um, it's earlier in the chat, Jimena linked it, um, within the next 24 to 48 hours. So if you want to come back and refresh or come back and paint along, if you're just watching here, it is again, right? There's the link. So it should be up in the next couple of days. You can always go back and rewatch this class and People are loving this, Kirsten. Kirsten has done tons of Michael's paint nights. You can go back to any of Kirsten's classes and paint along with her and learn some more. So make sure to check those out, guys. I love that. Also, can you hold it up? <laughs> and yes, I can. I just want you guys to see how on the yellow, I'm adding even more of this beautiful blue because each color is different on your base coat. You could do a dark burgundy base coat. You could do a dark hunter green base coat, but the colors that we choose to put on top react different based on what color we've got on the bottom. So the navy looks so different from the yellow. So let me do a little bit more of this beautiful ocean view. Don't forget, due to the edges, exactly what you do to the top. So just a dry brush. And then just like we've done with every color, I'm going to pick up a little bit of that wicker white 
and hop around a little bit down here, a little bit up here, and just little areas where the sun would meet that section of your little flower garden. Okay, I'm gonna hold it up. If I can be steady, oh, see where the yellow comes through, the green comes through, and you just have, my favorite part is the texture of the canvas. Like you can see it really, really good right there. That looks so good, Kirsten, everybody's loving it. And then what you can do, and this is just all based on how much color you want. Like for some of you, this is perfect and this is done. If you want a little bit brighter coral, just do the techniques that we learned tonight until you've got the brightness of the color that you're using. Like for example, I'm just gonna show you guys really quick. You don't have to do this, but on this, if you want just a little pop of color, that's brighter and more drastic. I'm just going in with that same fire coral and just doing a few dry brush strokes. Nothing different than what we've learned tonight. You're just layering that color until it's the exact color for your decor or for your mood or for just what makes it the perfect flower for you. The more you add, the brighter your color gets but you just want to really have that beautiful dark background coming through. So guys, that's tonight's painting. I definitely want to show you. Let me show you what next week's is. I love this. This is one of my all time favorites. So this is Jess. Jessie's back. Hopefully I'll be answering questions. It's fun. So this is, oh, I forgot the name. It has the greatest name. Oh, Blue Palm Dreams. <laughs> So this is folk art multi-surface and it is on a frame using, or just painting on glass. So you base coat on the back and then you do all the fun details on the front. So this is a great, um, a great technique that Jess is teaching next Monday. I think it's the 28th, same time. Uh, let's see, does anyone have any last questions before we say Everybody goodnight? Loving it, loving it, Kirsten. Everybody saying thank you, great class, awesome teacher, great job, love it. So everybody just had so much fun tonight, Kirsten. Thank you so much. Everybody we love, like Jess and I stay up late on nights that we're painting. Please post your photos or yes. photos of your canvases and post them on Make It Make It at Michael's and on Plaid Crafts. We love to see what you guys have if done. You guys are finished painting, hold your painting up. I wanna see them. Yes. Oh, I can't see them. I would love. Oh my gosh, they look so good. I'm gonna take a picture for Kirsten. Only you get to see them. Awesome guys, see them. those look amazing. You guys did such a good job. Tag them please, cause I, we love, love, love to see what you guys have done. Hashtag plaid crafts and hashtag make it with Michaels. We wanna see them. Okay guys, thank you so much. Don't forget we have another class this Friday. It's actually a, a daytime painting class with Chris Williams. She's gonna be painting on a baseball cap. So yep. really fun for summer. I'm um, using multi-service paints too. So yep. make sure you check that out. It's at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Friday. And of yep. course, we'll be back next Monday, same time. We'll be here every Monday for the foreseeable future. So thanks for joining us guys. We had so much fun on Monday nights and we will see you next time. Thanks everyone, bye. bye.